Welcome back to Digesting Dark, where we're tackling the Netflix series Dark, one episode at a time. For this podcast, we watched Season 3, Episode 3, titled Adam and Eva, and we're here to talk all about it with no knowledge of anything in the future, no reading Reddit boards, nothing like that is just my thoughts and Aaron's thoughts. I am Zach Brooks, and I am joined by the stranger Martha to my stranger Jonas, Aaron Brooks. Hello. How's it going? Do you like being Stranger Martha, or would you rather have been Stranger Jonas? Um, I don't know. I'm still not sure. I don't. I don't know how much to trust any of the Marthas at this point, or who's it, who. Uh, talking about trusting the Marthas. This is not a Handmaid's Tale podcast, but there are the Marthas in Handmaid's Tale. Oh, I didn't. I've not seen any of Handmaid's Tale. Oh, it's so depressing. This show is less. It looks depressing. really horrifying. It, it really, really is. Uh, yeah, so we will call her Stranger Martha, the woman who shows up at the end of this episode, until we are given a different name. Yep. But I do like that, you know, one of the things we like about this is that Dark at least gives names to people at different stages in their life, so it keeps it a little bit easier to track. You know, we have Adam, we have, uh, now I think we could officially call old woman Martha Eve, or Eva. Yep, well, she claims herself to be, so. Yep. Um, and so, as always, uh, Digesting Dark, we are going through Dark one episode at a time, the new third and final season. And we're discussing these episodes without any future knowledge. Just what we've seen so far, having watched and rewatched the episodes a number of times. Make sure you do not miss an episode of this podcast by subscribing on your favorite podcatcher, iTunes, uh, or I guess it's Apple Podcasts now, Google, Spotify. I use player.fm. If, you're a, and if you have an Android phone, player.fm is awesome. Highly recommend it. You also can subscribe on YouTube. Do have a YouTube channel. We're uploading all of these podcasts on there. Uh, so you can subscribe on YouTube and you can find them on there if you're one of those people who likes to listen to podcasts on YouTube. And make sure you're sending us feedback on the episodes as you watch them. Our email address is digestingdarkpod at gmail.com. We've got a number of emails in already for this episode. Just be sure you're including the episode number in the subject line when you send something in, because if it doesn't have the episode number, we're not going to look at it just in case we, it has any spoilers in it. So um, you know, for the next podcast, we'll be talking about episode number five, or sorry, episode number four, we're talking about episode number yeah. four. So just put episode number four in the subject line. And if you watch ahead, you know, that's fine. You can, send in, you can send in emails, but it's more fun if you stay on our pace. And the longer you drag this thing out, the longer you have dark in your life because uh, there's you know, episodes are slipping away like grains of sand. Indeed, yeah, yeah. I savor, savor these last four. Right. Five. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm that's what I'm trying to do. So we're now through three episodes. Uh, before we get into the third episode, do you want to talk about a little bit of feedback that we got on episode number two? Um. Yeah. Sure. Did you have something you want to talk about first? Um. My just. Like quick, I just I'll go, I was trying to decide whether to let their. I'll give my feedback real quick on just a couple of observations I just had out of order in this episode at okay. just random times, but that aren't necessarily dependent on this episode. One, Killian looks like Peter, so I don't know what that means, but they look really similar. I did to each notice other. that he does kind of look like Peter. Um, yeah, and there's never an accident on casting with stuff like that, so. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, still no uh, Bernadette. I'm waiting for Bernadette to show up. Bernadette HG, two characters that are yet to show up this season. So um, again, I'm just um, also just with the three ninjas. Mm -hmm. um, I really have a lot of different. So the middle aged of the three ninjas looks like Peter or so Killian. Cult. Yes. Yeah. So Colt looks like Peter Killian. The young one looks like Mads. Mm -hmm. And the old one looks like Helge. Yep. So I don't know if these are all necessarily the same person, like we initially thought when mm. they did the crossing of the arms thing. Maybe that was a little bit of a feint. I don't know. Because well, they do all have that same scar on their face. 
Yeah, that's true. I don't, they just like, they don't, I don't see the similarity between the young and the middle aged one, I guess. But. So, I mean, it could be, and we'll definitely talk about them because there's a lot of reveals about them in this episode. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it could be that we saw, you know, we're seeing people being, being blinded, like physically being blinded, their eyes being burnt off, their ears being scarred. So their, their scar on their lips could be similar to how the kids in the chair get the scar on their eyes. So maybe they all had the same experiment pulled on them and it just left like a slight scar on their lips yeah exactly so maybe that is just another like faint into making you think they're related with or not. yeah so i do have an observation on that scar as well but i want to hold that until we actually get yeah so that that was just a couple of like random things i had thought or i kind of noticed but the thing with killian really looking like peter um was one that was striking and then obviously we get some really interesting stuff with peter in the church mm-hmm. um, later too, which yeah. was really interesting. Yep. So, uh, yeah, so we'll get into everything from episode three. Let's go back in time a little bit to episode two. And we do have a couple of emails about that, either ones that are about the podcast. We have a couple that are about the podcast and a couple about the episode itself. The first is we have Pronunciation Corner with Adrian Colley. He wrote in to say the name that we kept saying, Silja, S I L J A. It's not pronounced as Silja. It is pronounced as Celia. It is a uh, strange spelling according to German rules is what he said. So okay. Celia is the woman who's going to end up marrying Bartos according to the family tree that we saw. And we still don't know who Celia is. We do not know who Celia is. Uh, we do have, but that is a, uh, that is a good segue because Rashawn Jones and Daniel Hackett actually both wrote in with feedback that is the same. They both think that Celia is from season two and that she is the woman that we keep referring to as Scarface. Mm-hmm. They're writing in and saying that they think she's the woman from the future who is with Elizabeth, the one who hit Jonas with the butt of her gun at the end of season one. And uh, Daniel Hackett went even further where he's saying he thinks Celia is the one who married Bartos and will be the girl with the scar and her face in the future, who we call Scarface. He says it's because she's the only one we really don't know who she's connected to. And... Um, He's also predicting that she will turn out to be Peter's mother. So if this is true, that would mean that Noah would be Peter's half-brother and son-in-law and father of Peter's wife. So three crazy connections between Noah and Peter. Yeah, I feel like we've got a lot coming for Peter. Like, this is a very big Peter season. Yeah, um, so, I mean, and it would make sense if Noah and Peter have all those connections, given that they both are the priest in the two different worlds. Yeah, and Peter is a name in the Bible also. Mm -hmm. Um, Not as, you know, well thought as like a Noah, but Uh, I think when I looked him up, Peter was like, the basic story was Peter at some point betrayed Jesus mm -hmm. and then ended up redeeming himself, but in death redeeming himself. So like irredeemable like mistakes that eventually he's able to redeem himself for, which is kind of what his arc is like. yeah i wish one of us or i wish we had like a bible expert on because i'm curious if our is peter a new testament name like could we take something you know noah is obviously old testament um and could we take something with the names that are old testament names versus the names that are new testament names even if you look at like the two different worlds as one mm-hmm. world is the old testament one world being the new testament well i mean eve's in one and Adam's in the other and they're both old testament right yes yeah yeah um but some of the other people i wonder um, yeah and so then um, we also have an email from Sophia Brower, and she says that she has to correct us on the play, so we continue to get the, the name of the play cor- incorrect. So we do have the name of it right. The play is called Ariadne, and uh, it is actually the play that is in both worlds. So it is not one play in one world and one play in a different world. I swear it had Adrian at one point, but I, apparently not. Apparently they're both Ariadne, and they're okay. myth in which uh, Ariadne is a daughter of King... Ariadne is the daughter of King Minos, and she helps Theus in his quest to kill the Minotaur that is in the labyrinth. Ariadne helps Theus get out of the labyrinth by giving him a string so that he can find his way back. So thematically, that ties a lot into the show. Yeah. All right, so there was no play that is called Adrian, apparently. Now, maybe that's incorrect, too. I feel like we're going in cycles with this. Uh, so if somebody wants to, like, weigh in with the definitive answer, I just don't want to try looking that up because I don't want to find anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but we do see quite a bit of Ariadne in this episode. Yep, right away. Yep. 
Um, all right, so that is what we have from episode number two. So now we can get into episode number three, which is titled Adam, Adam and Eva. The thunder is going to start rolling, and we are going to start rolling into this episode. Um, do you want to just kind of give some overall thoughts on the episode before we actually get into detail by detail? Um, yeah, I guess, like, just off the... Like, what are what are your feelings after this episode? Um, so the I watched this twice, and the first mm-hmm. time I watched it, I actually, like, felt very frustrated by it. And I think some of that comes from a little PTSD from season six of Lost, because I'm getting lots of season six from Lost vibes from this episode. But also just that we are running out of time. Like, literally are running out of time on this show. We only have five episodes left, I think. We think there's eight episodes. And I love this show. I don't want it to end. And when we're spending our precious time watching Hannah blackmail Alexander again, or watching the characters kind of repeat the beats from season one in the alternate world, to me, I'm just like, why is this what we're doing instead of focusing on the stuff that's more interesting? Yeah, this is, this is, I mean, for me, like, I think that this, this show throughout it has, you know, by design, I think had you feel the way you're supposed to be feeling as you're going. And I think that feeling of like, oh, this is happening again. Of course, everything's the same in this world as it was in the new world. Like, that's but it's all just, different, right? It's all, yeah, like I get it. Like, right. Yeah, I know you get it. And they're like, everybody should get it. That's very, it's very out there. That's not what you're supposed to be getting. But that's just like kind of the point. It's the further into the labyrinth you go, the the more lost you become, the more you just, you don't know what the beginning is, what the, what the cause is, what the effect is at mm-hmm. this point. It's just kind of how it is, right? You know, it's just, it's learning the same lessons they've learned throughout. It's like realizing that there really isn't any progress in these characters that you thought there was so much progress in. Mm-hmm. So, because they are, you can't change who you are. You can't change what becomes right and some of it is like butterfly effect stuff from things that are different in the two worlds that you know maybe this is the world without jonas and so you know for some reason having a world without jonas led to waller losing his arm instead of his eye and some of these other things but but deep down these characters are the same yeah Um, so so. the second time i watched it when i rewatched it i liked it better Mm -hmm. and i kind of came to a potential conclusion on what we're watching and we're not actually watching two alternate worlds. I think okay. what you're watching is these worlds take place after each other. So the, you know, prime world, I guess we can call that like Adam's world, is the one we watch first. And then something happens in Adam's world, which leads to everything resetting and we're watching Eve's world. And then something at the end of Eve's world is going to lead to everything resetting and we're watching Adam's world. So instead of being like two circles side by side, it's the infinity symbol. And they're connected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it continues to be connected. Right. And so maybe that thing, whatever it is that happens, is Agnes uh, Agnes Nielsen, because she was right at the center of that character tree, and we still haven't seen her this season. Yeah. Um, but when I think about the alternate world, not as like the sideways universe, to borrow from another show, but mm-hmm. as, a, as the deep future or the deep past of the prime world, it, uh, it helps me a little bit like contextualize this and not feel like we're just watching um like an alternate world that's a little frustrating that's yeah i think that's a good way of looking at it too um i just think overall it's it continues to theme that everything's the same as it always was like it's just it's not and i mean i think we're at a point where we're we still have a couple twists to go to really know where this is going so um, I think this is, you know, it's doing a little bit of a, you know, a rope-a-dope here. The setup, so. yeah. And, um, you know, I do think that when you think about the idea of Adam and Eve, obviously Adam and Eve were the first two people, you know, biblically, mm-hmm. they were the first two people, and everything came from Adam and Eve over time, over, you know, many, many centuries. If, if you're following the biblical story, not saying that's, you know, 100% mm-hmm. what happened. But if this show is kind of doing the opposite, where what we're doing is we're watching the journey of younger Jonas and younger Martha to become Adam and Eve at the end, and literally the end of the show will be the beginning where we're seeing Adam and Eve. Because it does seem like Adam and Adam in this universe and Eve in the other universe are working together somehow. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And they're kind of like two gods. So I think you're on the right track there. And that's yeah. uh, similar to where I'm feeling overall. And that's why I don't, I did not feel frustrated at all by this. I felt even the first is, time you watched it, even the first time I watched it. Yeah. Um, I really, I just, I guess for one, I really, um, you know, I just like the, I, I like the different characters filling different roles in this. And I like how, you know, um, Hannah's obsession with Ulrich has now shifted to her obsession with Charlotte. Like, I think those are just really, really clever. And I'm curious to see the results that they have. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I did think, especially on the second or third rewatch, that they're heading towards becoming Adam and Eve. Yes. They didn't start as Adam and Eve, and the end is the beginning. And that is like, I can't wait to see that. Right. Because that is so perfect for this show. Right. So what we're leading towards is the Adam and Eve, but instead of it being the beginning of everything, it's actually the end, but it somehow right. will actually, you know, somehow whatever Adam and Eve are trying to do is what's going to create these worlds to begin with. Yeah. And At I least mean, that's where we're leading right now. Yeah. And I like really, you know, appreciated how this, yeah, I guess we can go into how the episode opened now, unless you have more. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, it's, so we've got a, 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 ca a carriage going through the forest, the thunder is mm -hmm. rolling. And First of all, the opening shot of it mm -hmm. looks so different than any opening shot ever. It looked like it was out of Sin City. Like, it looked like a comic book, like, shot. It really just was unusual. And, like, the, it was, like, it was just filmed different than any other opening scene in this show. Mm -hmm. like well, it, they were using 1800s technology, so it might just be that. Yeah, but, like, either way, it like, really looked, um, like, yeah. yeah. I, I, I did. Sorry, your joke wasn't funny. But. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I don't know if that meant. So, it just looked so different than any other opening. Well, I mean, I like, I mean, I, I joked about it being 1800s technology, but this is really like, you know, we're going. You know, we thought 1888 was far back. We're now seeing uh, old man Tannen House as a child. So we're seeing like 1820, probably. It's probably 66 years before that. So 1822, mm -hmm. I would guess. Yeah. Yeah. So we I mean, we're just keep going further and further back. Yeah, and so, yeah, it's, it opens up with our favorite play, um, you know, and... Uh, Ariadne. Ariadne, and uh, the father of... You're going to get emails. Don't mispronounce it. We're going to get emails. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for your emails on pronunciation. Um, they are and, helpful. They are helpful. We just, you know, we accept our flaws, which is pronunciation. Yeah, and so the father of Blind Tana House, I don't think we know his name, uh, we, so we did get an email that has his name, but it's from the credits, and I don't want to. I don't like to use the credits. We'll find out his name. I feel like I don't think we okay. need from the credits. Yeah, and so interesting. He's talking about this play and how the old man Tan, Blind Tannehouse's mother loved this play and was obsessed with this play. So. Yes. Um, so right I wasn't away. sure. Is this? I'm pretty sure this guy that he's talking to is his father, but. I also couldn't tell if it was like a caregiver and the father was dead and this was just like an advisor. Um, well, I think the way he was talking about his mother, it mm -hmm. made it think this was his father okay. to me. Yeah, so I think maybe, that, that simplifies things to assume that this is the father. Yeah, and while he's also holding the playwright, he also has the watch um, that says for Charlotte. Yes, and he has Sigmundes, lots of Sigmundes swag. He's got a pen, mm -hmm. or he's got a, uh, a ring, he's got the cane, he's got the book. So what did you think when you saw the um, watch? Well, it wasn't until after I watched it twice and then started thinking about it, but I would not be surprised if that was old Peter. Yes. Yeah. That I, that, yeah, that's exactly what I thought. Mm -hmm. So um, that I just, when Peter begins is a huge mystery to me, but yeah. I, think I think it be a long I think time that, ago. That makes it very interesting if Peter is the origin of the Tanhouse family. Yeah. Because um, we still don't know where H.G. Tanhouse fa falls into this. Now, H.G. might end up being the blind guy's son. He might be his brother, might be his grandson. We don't know where H.G. Tanhouse fi fits in. What we do have confirmed, though, is that H.G. Tanhouse is not the same Tanhouse as the old one that we're seeing uh, throughout the season. Yeah, which I'm glad they did. I'm yeah. glad they confirmed that. Um, and so, you know, we'll see who – and I – I don't think that this person with the four Charlotte wrist, uh, watch was an old version of HG Tanhouse either. Uh, mm -hmm. Didn't look anything like him. So, I, nope. uh, but he does. I do feel like he kind of could be. You could see him and think that's Peter. 
Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure we've seen him in the Sigmundus picture. Who, Peter or this man? Uh, the oh, this man. Yeah, I, I've like part of me wants to try to find that picture, but I also like don't want to look it up. So, mm -hmm. um. Yeah, I'm pretty I mean, sure he's, he's on the right side with, like, the crazy, like... I feel like we shots. need to see this picture being taken at some point. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, they're, they're, they're going to go back to it for sure. But, um, yeah, I think that's old man Peter. That's my guess. Yeah. Um, and so Peter loses Charlotte somehow, you know, because it seems like this man talks about uh, how, you know, what he says, uh, the kid asks, why do we die? Mm -hmm. And the, the father says, the dead are never truly dead. And we've heard in other episodes that Tanhouse's father was trying to use time travel to save somebody who had died in the past. So, uh, you know, is it that Peter is trying to uh, is trying to save? Should we lose Charlotte at some point? Um, and I guess you know he did lose Charlotte in the present timeline. He doesn't know where she is. She travels to the future, so yeah. maybe some of that is related as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes, but it did say your mother loved this play. Talking about Ariadne, which made me think that the mother was actually Martha. Yeah. So it could be that it could be that the kid is the uh, that Tanhouse is the the child of Martha and somebody else, or the child of Adam and Eve. Um, just because we've seen Martha very interested in Ariadne. Mm -hmm. So this could just be a caregiver. Right. That was. So I took it that it was a caregiver. You know, kind of like a an Al, uh, Alfred. In Bruce Wayne type situation, okay, uh, where fair. the parents were dead, and then this was a caregiver because we don't get it confirmed that this is the father. Yeah, um, and also the pocket watch looks very new. Mm -hmm. When we've seen the pocket watch, it's old, it's weathered. Uh, now I don't know how a pocket watch would still work 120 years later, like when we're seeing it. But uh, this is the it's it, just like the machine that we saw in season two. This pocket watch is looks freshly created. Mm -hmm. Um, so then we go from the kid version of Old Man Tanhouse to the old version of Old Man Tanhouse, and he's in the back of his carriage again. We can hear some rustling going on outside, and his driver is killed. And we have just the middle ninja uh, coming in, the cult of the three ninjas, and coming in, and he gives a long, uh, he gives these long sermons, which make taking notes very difficult. I wish he wouldn't give such long sermons when he kills people. Yeah, but one of the lines he says has definitely been said before. Yeah, so or maybe he's, a few. Of them. So I have, I'll, I'll have what I wrote down. It's, it's kind of like, uh, not exactly, not word for word what he said, but he said he's talking about. Uh, he says, "You have eyes to see and ears to hear, and a mortal may convince himself that he can keep a secret if his lips are silent, but he chatters with his fingertips. Betrayal oozes from every pore." And then he talks about how you're going to go tell the world. Uh, you have a telegram to tell the world about us. Uh, and then Old Man Tannenhouse says, all these years, they said my father was insane. Uh, the world must know that travelers exist. And then the ninja says, what we know is a drop. What we don't know is an ocean. Someone else said that before. What we don't know is, I, I remember something similar. I don't remember it being a drop in an ocean. Do you remember who so said that? It was Adam. Um, he was, he, I believe, said a drop in an ocean, also said a thread in a weave of a carpet. Um, yes, I, I do remember the a, carpet. Uh, I think he used a drop in an ocean also. I think he used like three different examples of just how, um, you know, and how we know, yeah, what we know, just that we know so much less than what we don't. Mm -hmm. So I believe it was Adam who said that. Yeah, so it was in, uh, yeah. Um, he says, that Adam said there were no coincidences in the world. This is a thread in the carpet. And that was in the season two premiere that he mentions the carpet. Yep. Uh, so nowhere in this... my notes do I have the word, I just searched my notes, and nowhere do I have the word ocean. Okay. So I don't know if anybody, maybe I just didn't write it down, but I don't have. I thought, I, that sounded familiar, but maybe not. But mm -hmm. it's still the same idea either way. Um, um, and he has the wire, the, the ninja has the wire. Yeah, and I also wrote down one other note that was something I thought was off the first time I watched it. I definitely caught it the second time, and I haven't heard you bring it up yet. Uh, so that is that this this guy that we're seeing, the the ninja, so to speak, has a scar on the right side of his face, on the right side of his mouth, and mm -hmm. that's what we've seen throughout the show so far. When we've seen this guy, he has a scar on the right side of his mouth. You agree? Yep. Okay. Uh, later on, I'm going to bring that back up. I'm just going to add a little suspense and not reveal where I'm going. With that. I wonder where it's what side of his mouth it's on. Well, that, but you don't know when. I'm going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. 
It's not uh, what, but when, or where, but when. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so then we go into our uh, intro. Same. I, I didn't notice anything different in the intro this episode. Nope. Although it does, it does seem like what we're seeing at the end, where it says the words "dark." We used to see the cave with all the trees. It seems like the the version of the cave we're seeing is what we see at the end of this episode. It's much yeah. lighter. But what I did notice is after the intro, we don't have any kind of transition between the uh, prime world and the alt world Mm -hmm. now it could just be that there was the intro and we you know but every other time that we've jumped between these two worlds we have that that transition you know we call it the eye doctor thing where it zooms in zooms out yep so could that mean that this was this opening stuff that we saw was all from the alt world and not from the prime world yeah i think so did you get that impression the first time you watch it that's maybe why it was kind of off, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, like, maybe that's why it felt a little off. I mean, it really did feel off. Yeah, I mean, so we see, and I didn't even say it, but we do see the, the ninja kill old, old man Tanhouse, and we don't see Tanhouse the rest of the episode, but I guess we don't know which version of, you know, that could have been an, an alternate version of Tanhouse that he killed. Yeah. Um, all right, so then we're in uh, the bunker where uh, Adam and Eve are. Or Jonas and Eve, I guess we could say. Uh, the Adam and Eve pictures, though. And and old Martha is talking about the mistake that we have is believing that we're independent. We are all small fractions of an infinite whole. So that's kind of similar to the ocean line. That's similar to the carpet line. Um, yep. That we don't know that we don't know very much. That we're just a small piece of this. Mm-hmm. And Jonas brings up uh, your idea. Is this world a copy of my world? So you and Jonas talking the same. There we go. Yeah. Um, and and Eve brings up the – she references the glitch in the Matrix line that he said to her. He said, you and I are Adam and Eve, and we are a glitch in the Matrix, and you're here to save both worlds. Any chance that this world is like a simulated world? I don't think so. I hope not. I can't no. imagine that's what it is. No. But it is, it is weird that she brings up this glitch in the Matrix line. So we've got this a couple times. This has come up. Yep. So Jonas says, yeah, Jonas mentions it to Alt Martha, and then we've also had it. Did do you remember? Did Mickle say it to Jonas, or did Jonas say it to Mickle originally? I think it's Mickle that says it to Jonas uh, originally. So I know Jonas says it to Michael when he reveals that he knows who he is. Uh, so it's just a phrase that has been passed from potentially passed from Mickle to Jonas to to Michael. Martha. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then we go to the police station. This is a much more f- straightforward scene. Finally, I felt like I could finally breathe after these like first few scenes. I was like, all right, yeah. good. Now we have like a much more straightforward scene. We mm-hmm. just have Ulrich telling the cops about the body that they found last night. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, in, in this show, usually each episode is a day. It seems like for this alt world, at least so far, we're going a day every other episode because the body that they found in episode one, the next day is episode three. Yeah. Um, so I guess that would mean that if the apocalypse is happening three days after that first day that we saw, so this is one day after is episode three, two days after would be episode five, and three days after the day of the alt world apocalypse would be episode seven. Mm-hmm. So we don't have that confirmed, but it seems like that's the pattern they're going with. Yep, I think that's right. And Ulrich is very upset because obviously what they found is uh, all of Mikkel's belong, or sorry, all of Mads's belongings on the body that they found. And that they're talking about how they the kids found it in the bunker and listing off the kids who found it. This is one of those scenes where, from my perspective, I'm like, oh, well, of course he knows that he's looking at Mads' body. But it, it wasn't until a little bit later that I realized, like, Ulrich doesn't realize what he's looking at is his brother's body. He thinks what he's looking at is a just some random kid who got killed that was dressed up like his brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he thought someone just kept the clothes and did it. Mm-hmm. Um, so Ulrich starts to kind of break down. He's very upset about this. We see another scene between Charlotte and Ulrich in the evidence room. And uh, Ulrich is saying that, that the reason why he joined the force was because the cops were all drunk morons and made so many mistakes. Yep, which is the same as in the prime world. Yeah. Why he joins. Uh, we don't hear anything about Egon Tiedemann. I'm assuming that he's still referring to Egon Tiedemann, but we don't actually know that. Yeah. We um, haven't seen Egon. No, we have not seen Egon. There's, there's some characters we have not seen in this alternate world in addition mm-hmm. to Jonas. 
um, mostly the Tiedemans, because Regina is dead, and we yep. aren't seeing we aren't seeing Claudia, we aren't seeing Egon, nothing like that. Yeah, maybe a world without the Tiedemans, or and who knows? Mm -hmm. um, and also that uh, Ulrich brings up what we what we've also noticed that he is cheating on the woman who he cheated on his wife with. Mm -hmm. So quality guy that Ulrich Nielsen. <laughs> Yeah, he makes good, no impulse decisions. Yes, uh, but he does. Well, he does it. He does impulsively decide that he's going to end things with Charlotte, and she doesn't. Yeah. She seems to understand, which you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't seem like she was that into him at times, anyways. So it's probably for the best for everybody. Yeah. Um, again, just because I brought up the evidence boxes when we saw them in the evidence room in scene one, or in episode one, I just noted the few dates on the evidence boxes that were behind charlotte so we have 591 so may of 1991 and 11 of 81 november of 1981 not sure if those are going to be important probably not with only five episodes left but just want to note them in case somehow those just years simples. become important yeah so then we transition back from the alternate world to the prime world barth toes and martha walk into uh tan house's uh, headquarters where the stranger is and Bartos is confronting the stranger uh, about being stuck there. He says that they've been stuck there for weeks. My understanding is it's been three months. I don't know why you would refer to three months as weeks. Um, it, it it's probably was just a weird phrasing, but do you think that maybe they haven't been there that long? No, I think it's probably weird phrasing. Yeah, because they seem so well- it's been weeks. Right, yes, like, like 12 weeks at least. Yes. Uh, well, you know, Bartos is weird. Yeah, Bartos is weird. I I don't think Bartos is the worst. I have a new candidate for the worst after this episode. It's not Bartos. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Bartos says that the stranger has been lying, and he's known all along that their machine never doesn't work, and um, that uh, the stranger responds. He says that this is not Martha. She's dead. People don't come back from the dead. So mm -hmm. total contrast from what we saw in the first scene. Yep. Uh, Magnus has to chime in because he hasn't said anything in a little while and he says, uh, she, but she may be our only way out. So, good job, Magnus. Um, Francisca, mute in this episode, apparently. Doesn't say anything. Has no lines. None. Yeah. Just looks. Yeah. So she's becoming more like her alternate part. Yeah. Um, then we go outside. They take it outside and we get one of those classes, classic Bartos and Jonas fighting in the rain scenes. Mm -hmm. so that, it's I like all that. happening it's a, again it's yeah all i like that as a, as a callback to season one. Oh, yeah. fighting over martha too yep and yeah it's just everything yeah everything is just happening like it, it's like you're jana it's just like everything's happening like it always has mm -hmm. like, it's that you're getting the feeling that all these characters have had in this world already in different moments you're now having as the observer here mm -hmm. yeah, like, it, it, the whole show is deja vu yeah, and like I mean, I maybe by the end of the show, it's one of these shows where you realize you're like an active participant as the audience. I don't mm -hmm. know. Like, I'm not saying it's like a fourth wall breaking type of thing, but like maybe you're like an observer or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just saying, like, there you're supposed to be feeling like I've seen this all before. Why are they showing us me now? Time is running out. All those feelings are supposed to be being felt right now. I believe, mm -hmm. and maybe that's me being a fanboy. But I actually really believe it based on previous evidence from this show mm. and when it's had you feel certain ways or not. I think it's manipulating us into feeling this like frustrated panic, like why are, why I get it, like, but I don't get it. Mm -hmm. Just like the characters, they get it, but they don't get it. They continue not to get it. Jonas is an idiot, like all these things. Like, yeah, every version of Jonas seems like he's an idiot. And it's like, how do you not get this? Like, mm -hmm. But he can't, because he never did. Like, but because he, he has to never get it in order to create the things that create the thing that sent our camp everything back. It, it's 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 you know the frustration that you get in any sort of a free will determinism situation. Mm -hmm. So, do you remember? Did Magnus pull uh, Bartos and Jonas away from each other when they were fighting in season? No, one? it was Martha who did. Okay. So, so that's like Martha. again, yeah, exactly. It's everything shifted just a tiny bit again. Mm -hmm. like it's just well you know it, yeah so so then uh bartos obviously upset he is uh finally telling everybody the secret that the stranger won't tell them that the stranger is adam the stranger is the one who killed martha he's adam is the stranger mm -hmm. 
Um, and everybody just seems a little confused by this. Of course, I feel like this is when the stranger should have been like, yes, Adam is me in the future, but I am not Adam yet. I was on Yeah, the- but he can't, but like where he's at in his time at this point, he can't. Like, he doesn't have that information that Adam does have. But he knows he, he knows he's going to become Adam. Jonas knows that Adam. Yeah, but if he says that, that changes his destiny. He never said in that at that point. So mm-hmm. it's just like, again, it's just it's. So basically, you just can't ask why about anything on this show. The question is never. Yeah, yeah. You can't ask why. Okay. Um, all right. So then we go back to the alt world. We have Eva and Adam. I wrote Eva and Adam. It, it's Eva and Jonas. I guess because of the Adam and Eve pictures. Mm-hmm. And uh, this was a, another one of those kind of mind-blowing scenes where uh, Eve is telling Jonas, Do you, have you ever wondered why you can't let her go? There's an invisible ribbon that binds you two. Adam tried to sever it. And I guess that was uh, by killing Martha was when he tried to sever it. Yep. She shows Jonas the St. Christopher coin. And at this point, right before she showed the coin, I was like, oh, they're like, two, you know, Adam and Eve, they're like two sides of the same coin. And then she literally shows that, shows the coin. Mm-hmm. And she's like, yep, see, we're two sides of the same coin. Um, and she tells him that uh, he's seen what Adam will do. Uh, you must make me what I will so that I can come back. You must make me what I will become so that I can come back. And uh, Jonas has like a little spaz attack where he says that he is sick to death of having all of these obligations. <laughs> so he's sick of uh, he's sick of being told what he has to do and what he's supposed to do all the time, and never doing the right thing. Yeah. That's true. Maybe if he used his own free will, he would do the right thing, but instead of just following this path, following the thread. Trusting what he's told by everybody else. By Martha or by himself. Yeah, which we found that everybody else is lying about everything, you Mm -hmm. know, like, and just using it to their, you know, what they think is their advantage. And we will find it by the end of this episode that both uh, old Alt-Martha and uh, young Alt-Martha are lying to Jonas at different Mm -hmm. times in his life. Yeah. So um, she gives him this thing that I don't even, it looks like an iron almost. And uh, we find out later that it's a flashlight. I was, I thought maybe it was like a time machine. I wasn't sure what she was giving him. Um, yeah, I didn't. Ask. But just it's just like a, a, a rectangular version of the circle flashlight that we've seen before. Mm-hmm. Maybe and, a sign she's trying to fit a square peg through a circular hole. Ooh, through a round hole. Oh, maybe. Mm-hmm. That could be everything. You could that could be the whole way you could describe Jonas and Martha's relationship: square peg, round hole. Yep, maybe. Um, so there's got to be a reason for the different shaped light. They wouldn't just throw another light for no reason. Uh, I mean, something. but like the time machine is a little bit different. Like everything's a little bit different in this world. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. It's just a little different. Since I have a circle, it's a square. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and instead of the rectangular box that we had for the time machine in the regular world, we have a sphere. Yep. So, um, it might just be that, that they, they just switch those things. Mm-hmm. Then we see back in 1888, uh, alternate Martha is lying in her bed. Oh, wait, no, sorry, not back in 1888. This is still in, uh, this is still in the 2019 alternate world. Martha is mm-hmm. lying in her bed, and Ulrich is, like, ringing the doorbell like a madman, trying to get their attention. And she goes down, lets him in, and they're talking, and uh, he asks where Magnus is, and she says that he's asleep upstairs. Middle of the afternoon, and he's asleep upstairs. It reminded me of uh, of Mikkel with Egon. Oh, yeah. And um, so Ulrich is asking about the bunker, asking if Killian drugged her or she took anything. Then Magnus comes down. Apparently he woke up because he did ring the doorbell like 20 times. And uh, Magnus is wearing a skeleton shirt. I noticed that. Yep. Um, so that was a nice touch. And Ulrich is asking, you know, all about Magnus and and Martha. And uh, Magnus points out, it's really nice that you could make some time to come and ask about us, like sarcastically, because mm-hmm. Ulrich is a terrible father. I noticed that, uh, you know, Mikkel is nowhere to be found at this point, and Ulrich doesn't seem interested in asking about Mikkel. Yeah, I noticed that too. Do you think that's just, you know, again, they're like writing Mikkel out of the show because he's gotten too old, or is there more to it than that? I don't know. I thought it was strange, though. Yeah, because in this world, Mikkel is older. So if they use that actor, like unless they mm-hmm. just couldn't get the actor. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Mikkel, outside of like, a couple shots of him with a hat on and sleeping in bed, we've barely seen him. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So uh, Hannah arrives at the police station. She made brownies, it looks like. 
And uh, this was a nice nod to the audience. Hannah says to Charlotte, you look different, Charlotte. Have you gotten a haircut? Mm -hmm. And then gives her the hug and the smell. Yep. Same thing Katarina did. Yeah. Um, and the only, I think the only other thing from that scene is that she asks where Ulrich is, and Charlotte says that she thought Ulrich went home. And, of course, mm -hmm. Ulrich uh, is not going to be at home, so it's going to make her even more confused. Yep, similar to Charlotte dealing with Peter, saying he was at home when he's, like, at the, you know, the bunker mm -hmm. or whatever. Oh, yeah, that's true. He is. Yep. Uh, so Mar Martha and Magnus are up in Magnus's room. He has Eat the Rich written on his wall and mm -hmm. um, just, like, lots of posters and pictures everywhere. I think he has Rats written on his window as well. Yeah. Um, and Martha is asking Magnus if he saw anybody in the woods, and they're talking about the night before. And uh, Martha says, I know exactly what I saw. Or was that Magnus who said that? One of them said that. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't know. Yeah, uh, I didn't I didn't notice who it was. But somebody said, I know exactly what I saw. And then, uh, much like other characters we've seen on this show, Martha leaves through the window. Mm -hmm. Climbs down, yeah. Climbs down. I guess because Katarina got home. In this time, because they did reference when Alwick was there that he should leave because Katarina was going to be coming home soon. Yeah. So I guess she just didn't want to interact with her mom when she left. So she snuck out. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've got, uh, you know, another scene with. Um, oh, I, so this is when uh, when old Martha gives Magnus the flashlight because then she's talking again and she says, everything repeats. Uh, you will always choose your Martha. And then she gave him something with the handle, the square, the square light. No, Jonas, not Magnus. You said Magnus. Oh, yeah, yeah, Jonas. So Martha, okay. Martha, this is Martha, old Martha and Jonas. Mm -hmm. And um, she says, you trusted the path that Adam led you on. You must show Martha how this is all intertwined. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Jonas leaves and we get a shot of old Martha, which is similar to, uh, you know, similar to the shot that we got of Adam in the last season where she's just kind of staring at her pictures and uh, like contemplating and, and doesn't look very happy about everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think at this point also, I noticed that she was standing in the middle of the Adam and Eve posters. So before she'd been standing on the Eve side, now she's standing right in the middle. Hmm. What do you think that means? Mm, probably nothing. Probably just, as, probably just a design thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe she, maybe she's the, you know, maybe she's everything that we're seeing. Um, I don't know. Could could old Martha be Agnes Nielsen? I don't think so, because I don't think she looked enough like the stranger version of Martha that we see. But you know, it is weird that Agnes Nielsen is the first step off. I still like stuck on the fact that she's the first step off that infinity symbol. Mm -hmm. All right, in 1888, we have uh, alternate Martha with the stranger. And he's asking her what everybody's been asking. If Jonas went to this alternate world with you, why doesn't he, why doesn't the stranger remember anything about it? Yep. So we we said that you know in the last podcast we thought that it was because there was actually progress, or at least that's what I thought. I said, uh, mm -hmm. but maybe. And then actually early in the episode, I was thinking maybe that the stranger had been lying about it, and he actually did remember it. Um, but now it seems like maybe something actually happens, and he loses his memory from this event. Yeah. Kind well, of I mean, it, it, maybe it's the, the the whole time travel having a dementia, dementia effect, but I'm not mm, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it, it is – I'm more on board now with that something happened and he can't remember it versus this is a different version of Jonas. Okay. Um, and they bring up the letter. Martha says she didn't write the letter that he has. Now, we don't know who wrote the letter or what's in the letter yet. Mm -hmm. I don't even know. Is the stranger even opened that letter yet? I don't. I think they've just shown him holding it. Yeah. So, um, so I'm wondering if whatever's in that letter is going to spur his memory of what he did, similar yeah. to Michael seeing the jacket. And I think there was something in the last episode that spurred somebody's memory as well. Um. So we've had things that that remind people of the of their past. Yeah, it would mean it would be good mirroring for sure. Yeah. Um. And she asks the stranger about Sick Mundes. And this is when the stranger mentions that, you know, old man Tanhouse tried to bring someone back to life, um, thought all the errors could be fixed by time travel, but doesn't bring salvation, only damnation. And then Martha mentions that everybody is dead in her world, but she wants to prove to him that she can be trusted. 
So she takes him outside in the rain and digs up her version of the machine, the spherical machine, pulls out a black ball of fuel and says, this is my last one, and gives it to him. So that's her way of showing that Jonas, at least to show him that he, she could be trusted. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, and it's just this world's version of the time machine in every way. I like how even the canister is different for, like, the material inside the... Yeah, but it's the same, it's probably the same material, I guess. It's probably the well, same maybe, particle. Well, maybe, because, yeah, maybe, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, it, could, it, might not be. So... Um, so then, you know, right after Martha is saying that she can be trusted, we see the old version of her in the alternate world, and the three ninjas enter her office. So she is, uh, apparently she is in line with them. They bring her the book, and, uh, something black, which turns out to be the power plant map, along with two keys, and the four Charlotte pocket watch. Yep. And she talks about how we must preserve this knot, um, and they bring up kind of like what Magnus and Francisca did with Adam in the last season, that you could have told him what path he was on. Yep. And old Martha says, his Martha must always die. So that it must always happen. Just everybody always thinking that their, uh, you, their understanding of how things are supposed to go are the right ones and everybody mm -hmm. else's are wrong. Right, yeah. Um, that, thinking you know, they're the individual entity. Right. Well, and, and she, much like Adam, they both try, are trying to preserve all of these events happening to lead to their creation of Adam and Eve. Yep. Um, if we're looking at it as, as this version of progress. And this was where I noticed the scar. So the scar, on, I watched it twice, noticed this when I first noticed it, then on the rewatch I paid special attention to it. The scar is on the left side of this guy's face now. Hmm. So... Is it that when he travels between worlds, that scar gets reversed? And it's on the left side, I think, in all three of them when they show them. I mean, I just can't remember if you can see the scar on the other guys. But um, it's definitely on the other side of the face. Yeah. that's. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's either, like, you know, as you said, you know, maybe these aren't the same three people, but they've all, like, as we were talking about, they, they all had the same experiment. Maybe that experiment was, like, some sort of cloning thing or splitting. Mm -hmm. So it's split, and there's one version that's in this world, one in the other. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. And so that's something I definitely will be watching. Definitely on purpose, though. Yeah, it's, I, I can't imagine that that's like a makeup, prop, uh, makeup error, like continuity yeah. error or something. So, uh, yeah, that's on the left side. And it is something that we talked about with this mirror world, that like the houses and stuff were reversed, the way the houses were set up. Mm -hmm. um, and we talked about, like, we're actual people reversed, and we didn't notice anybody. Although we do have Waller's left eye in the original world was blind in his right arm. Or sorry, his right, I think it was his right eye and his left arm. But it's the opposite arm from the eye that was, uh, nope. that was hurt. I do not think that Helge is reversed. I think Helge had that. It's the same side that Helge is blind versus deaf. Well, Helge has an eye instead of an ear. Right, but it's the same side oh. of the face. Oh. Yeah, I think so. I'm yep, pretty sure. I, I, he had I'd someone with the right and side and it's his left side, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, we'll have to look for Enos's mole. Oh, that is a good observation. Yeah, when we see Enos, what side is her mole on? Yep, if we see which, Enos, I'm hoping that it's not just like that Enos's contract expired and they just don't have her on this show anymore. No, I don't think that's. Yeah, I don't think that's the case. Okay. Uh, and then, so in this world, we've got Charlotte. Uh, she is investigating the bunker, and um, she goes in there. She's she's being led by a flashlight. And uh, her flashlight shows something written on the wall. They didn't translate it, and I couldn't really tell what it was, so I'm guessing it's not important. Um, yeah. But I'm she sure does see the red thread with the coin. Yep. And this transitions to Helge holding the, the a different version of that red thread with the coin. Um, you know, it's, it's we're not sure exactly. It seems like this is the same red thread and the same coin, but we don't know. You know, does does Helge go back in time and leave this thread in the bunker? Mm -hmm. That's kind of my running theory on it. Yeah, I think I'm. I don't know what else. That was my thought too. I don't know what else. I mean, unless it's that they have lots of red threads or coins from all of the different kids that they sent, and so there's a couple of them, and they had one at the bottom that was left at the bottom of the bunker. Well, yeah, they have shown that being. They have shown that in every kid, right? So. so I think that this this coin, you know, this is just a regular like penny or whatever with the year on it so it's not like these coins are as rare as probably that saint christopher is like a one of a kind 
Yeah. So it, it might not be that it's the same, but it's the same type of where the red thread in the coin. Mm -hmm. um, then we see Martha going to Eric's dad's trailer and she's going to talk to Killian, I guess, to see if Killian knows anything about her being drugged, maybe her hallucination. And she says that she didn't see him at the dorm. So I guess, does, does Wyndon have a college that we didn't know about until now? Um, maybe, uh, I mean, e either that or it's just mistranslated, possibly. Mm -hmm. Maybe, but maybe, maybe it's an apartment. It, yeah. Because uh, Killian says that he hasn't lived here in two years. I heard But that. she still treats him like trailer trash. Mm -hmm. um, and they basically break up. But what I got from this is, I guess... Uh, I guess Killian is not in high school with them. He's actually like a college kid. And Yeah, but they show him in the high school, I thought. Right. No, he is in the high school in the first episode. So I was like, why does this guy hang out? I guess he's just like the Matthew McConaughey from Dazed and Confused. He just is like dating high school girls and hanging out at the high school. I guess. Yeah. I was, that's like the first thing that came to my mind. I was like, what is, what is with this? Although it does explain possibly why we don't see Killian in the prime world. Because Killian actually exists. He's just away at college. And since he's not dating Martha, he has no reason to be around. Yeah, that could be. I, yeah, I just find it weird he was never even mentioned when Eric was, like, brought up. Right, you would think when Eric disappears that his brother would come back. Yeah. Um, we also don't know anything about Eric's mother. No. And no. he does have bright red hair. So I know you mentioned that uh, Francisca is the only other person with, bright, with red hair. So yep. maybe there's a connection there. Um, and then Jonas is in the background, creepily watching them with his hood up. Which we see we see that shot a lot of lots of characters. Yeah. Uh, then you know, Killian is is the worst. I thought that's what I wrote down. Also. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just I, it's Killian's one of those characters where maybe he ties in with everything bigger, and and you mentioned that you think he kind of looks like Peter, so maybe there's that. Um, but to me, it's just kind of um, I don't get why he's I don't get why he's being introduced and he's around right now. It reminds me of the guy who they got rid of from the first season of uh, Parks and Rec. The oh, boring yeah. white dude, Tom was it? No, 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 it wasn't Tom. It wasn't Tom. Um, I know who you're talking about. Greg was that his name? Yeah, I don't remember, but he was like everybody knew. He was like the worst, and yeah. just like, why is he here? And like, um, yeah, that, this guy's that guy. We'll okay. Say he's, yeah. We'll say he's the Killian. Yeah, yeah, the Killian of Parks and Rec. Everybody who's seen Parks and Rec knows who I'm talking about. Yep. Yeah, I, I can't remember what that guy's name is, but I know exactly who you're talking about. Which is why he got off the show. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think between this scene with Killian and then this next scene is the first time I was watching it where I was just like, what are we doing? Like, why are we wasting time with this? Because uh, then we have a scene between Hannah and Alexander, and they're in the power plant, and she says that she's very sorry about Regina and is asking how Bartos is. And then, much like we saw in the first season, she gives Alexander that bag which he had his stuff in. And so mm -hmm. she's blackmailing him, um, but in less of a cool way than the, the way that she did it the, in the first season. Yep. But revealing to him that she knows his identity, and uh, he says, what do you want, money? And she says, no, I want you to destroy Charlotte. Mm -hmm. So this time, instead of wanting to destroy Ulrich, she wants to destroy a different cop who is having an affair, and that is Charlotte. Yep. Do you think this is going somewhere? Um, I mean... In this world, Charlotte's going to probably end up where Ulrich was in some way. Oh, up... so you think Charlotte's going to end up being the one who travels back in time? Mm hmm Oh, all right. See, I, okay, I kind of like that if Charlotte is playing the Ulrich role. Yeah. Yeah, my thought was that Ulrich, we're going to see Ulrich being so, uh, so obsessed with Mads and Mads' stuff that Ulrich is going to end up traveling back in time, not Charlotte. Okay. But it seems like one of them has to. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's gonna be Charlotte. My money's on Charlotte. Yeah, I like that. Okay, that would be an interesting twist. Yeah. Um, so Charlotte Charlotte pulls up to the church. She walks in, and Peter is in church meeting with a young man. I know you said this is a big Peter episode, so I'm sure you have thoughts on this. Yeah, um, who th that's got to be younger Peter he's talking to, right? Like, so you think that's like Noah and mm -hmm. Noah? The scenes that we've seen with that. Yeah. Okay, I, I wasn't sure. I did get that vibe, but. The kid didn't seem that much younger than him, whereas the different Noah, did Noah. See, it, it did seem about thirty years. Okay, I'd say. Yeah, I guess um, you can pick that up. And the way that young the young Peter looks, which I think it's young Peter. I don't mm -hmm. know. I didn't look at, but the way young Peter looks at Charlotte as he's leaving, like you know, uh, it is like kind of similar to the ways like 
young Katerina would look at like older Katerina and even though obviously young Peter isn't the same as mm -hmm. older Charlotte, but it's like when you see someone from your future before you're supposed to see them, they have like a way of kind of prolonging the gaze on them. And I yeah. noticed, I noticed that with this young kid as he walked out and they purposely like left out all of what he said. So if Peter is like Noah, mm -hmm. um, it like this version of this this world's version of Noah. So he's like a time traveler, just like yeah. the young version of himself and the old version of himself. Um, I think that could lend some credence to what we saw in the very beginning of the episode. If that old man is Peter, mm -hmm. that what we were actually seeing was we were seeing the alter the way back in the alternate world, not way back in the prime world. Yeah, I'm telling you, the way that it opened, it opened and it looks so weird. Just watch the opening again, like okay. and pause just the first shot and tell me if that doesn't like look like something's off here yeah i just like, noticed how many trees there were that it was like a road with a ton of trees it looked it like it was black and white it looked like sin city okay. like that's what i thought both times i saw it i was like this reminds me of like sin city here this is just <laughs> really weird i never would have thought sin city would come up so much on a dark podcast well yeah that's what i'm here for exactly yeah uh, did you ever see sin city 2 no i never saw that either no Left it at one. I love Sin City, though. I think it's... I, I only saw it once. I liked it a lot. A lot of people suddenly not like, but I still like it. Oh, yeah, I liked it. I, I don't remember much about it, but I remember seeing it. Yeah. Um, all right, so then we get a conversation about Helge between Charlotte and Peter. Uh, so Charlotte is asking Helge about last night. Or, sorry, Charlotte is asking Peter about Helge last night. Apparently they had dinner together. And then she's asking about him and having the bunker and if he lived at the cabin. And uh, asks if he had the bunker when Peter arrived in town in 1987. So once again, we're getting a reference to Peter arriving in Winden in 1987, mm -hmm. which is the same thing that we had in the Prime World. Um, we don't know where he came from. Yep. Either of these times. And um, it's it's weird that nobody seems to ask about that. That like this guy is apparently Helge's son, but showed up after he was already probably the age of the kid that we just saw, if that's young Peter. Mm -hmm. That's probably Peter in 1987. Yep. Um, it's not where he showed up from, it's when. It's when he showed up from, yeah. Um, and that uh, Peter says that Helge was in, uh, was already in the nursing home at that time. Yep. So apparently, probably in the nursing home from when he was uh, in that car accident, if, if things happen the same. And then uh, suddenly Peter gets a call on his cell phone. Also, uh, and I think somebody brought this up in comments that we got, but is it weird that Peter is a priest and has a wife? Yeah, I, I didn't think about that, but um, I don't know how that works. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't either. We, this is what we really need the religion expert on this podcast with us yeah. who knows more about this stuff. Too bad they're not rabbis. We can yeah. answer those questions. Um, yeah, no, then we just look dumber because we wouldn't know that stuff either. That's true. Um, oh, so what the curly hair. Yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, so he suddenly gets a phone call that Helge is at the police station and Helge is confessing. So we did see when we saw Helge holding the coin a couple minutes ago, he stands up and walks out. And this is this is diverging from Helge in, in the first season because in that season, Helge walks out and he goes, he doesn't go to confess. He goes to try to travel back in time, correct? Yep. Yeah, we never got Helge confessing in season one. Yeah. He always wanted to, but never did. Right. So then uh, Helge is confessing, and Ulrich comes in. And just like in season one, Ulrich starts strangling Helge, like a Bart Simpson, Homer Simpson type strangle, um, wanting to know why he had all, the, all of Mads' stuff. And this is where I was like, oh, that uh, Ulrich doesn't realize that this kid that they're looking at is actually Mads. It's, he just thinks it's some yeah. random kid with Mads', yep. with Mads's uh, clothing on. Yep. And this, so this, I think, is where why I thought that Ulrich is going to be the one to go back in time, because Helge says, you're alive, it was you. Which makes me think that Ulrich goes back in time uh, and, you know, tries to, tries to kill young Helge, just like he did in season one. And maybe in this time when he goes back in time, he's actually killed, because Helge seems surprised that Ulrich is alive. Hmm. I don't know why else Helge would be surprised that Ulrich is alive. Yeah. I like that theory. Um, maybe it's maybe both uh, Ulrich and Charlotte go back, and they go back to different times. Maybe Charlotte goes back to the '80s, and and Ulrich goes back to the '50s. Could be something like that. Yeah, that could be too. Um, or maybe actually, what if it's that Ulrich goes back, and Ulrich actually is the one who slams the car into Helge, 
like old Helge did. And that's why, because he, he obviously has to see Ulrich die. Mm-hmm. So. And that's how Ulrich dies there. Right. So instead of old Helge dying, that's Ulrich dying. Mm. So we'll have to, we'll have to watch that and see. Uh, then we have uh, Martha in the woods and uh, Jonas approaches her and um, Jonas says that he's always been there and he lists in her life and lists the different things from her past that they both shared. Um, and she doesn't seem surprised by any of these. So apparently all these things happened in both the prime world and the alternate world. Magnus getting his tooth knocked out, Nickel putting uh, spiders in her shoes when they were camping and uh, Martha getting homesick on a school trip and having to have Katarina come pick her up. Mm-hmm. Apparently all of those things happened. And uh, Jonah says that her, that Martha's future self is the one who told her about everything. And uh, Martha responds, you're mad. Which seems very close to Mads. You're Mads. Yeah, you're Mads. No, I'm Jonas, actually. Um, Jonas is Mads. Yeah. Ooh, no. It's, no way. Uh, I can... Uh, so Jonas says, I can show you how this is all bound. <laughs> so he's going to, Jonas is going to show Martha the way of the time travel. Yep. And it seems like just telling her all of these things from her life. Oh, also he mentions that she saw her future self when uh, she was at the caves the night before. So um, I think that's really what, like, there's nobody else who would know that. So the fact that he knows that and tells her that the old version of her told him that, I, I think that's what really sells Martha. Like, okay, I can believe this guy. Mm-hmm. In 1887, we have the stranger putting that black glass ball into a pot, and he turns on all the machines, the electricity strikes it, and we get the creation of the black goo, the uh, god particle that we saw um, Adam has control of in the second season. Mm-hmm. But it's not quite there yet, the power fails, so he's not able to fully make it. It, it, it. Similar to how when Jonas tries to get it working in the future time, the beginning of season two and it fails because of the lack of power yep. and it was that he needed more fuel i think he had to go get gasoline to get it working in the yep. future so we'll have to see what the stranger is going to have to get to get this one working yeah because as bartos says in this uh later or earlier it's hard to find uh nuclear supply in right 1888 probably also hard to find gasoline in 1888 yep so it's gonna have to find something else to power it very back to future three problem yep um maybe they'll have, maybe they'll have to have a train something with a train i don't know what that would be um but as the power is failing they all realize that martha is gone and she ran she goes into the bedroom and she grabs a lantern she has her machine and pulls out like a, a stick with all of those those balls in it so um, apparently she had a whole bunch more fuel rods and those fuel rods did you think those looked different than the one that she gave Jonas? I couldn't really tell. Because it looked like the one that she gave the stranger was black and much darker in the center, and these were clear. Like, almost like that was a used-up one, and the ones that she had were unused. Yeah, um, I don't know. Yeah. It was it was hard to tell. I, I was trying to watch for it on the on It may the have been the time. lighting. Yeah, it might have just been the way it light, the lit. I, I, I don't think they were different. At um, least that wasn't my thought watching mm-hmm. Um, so then she uses the machine and she transports herself away and uh, everybody runs in and I thought it was, it was interesting. The stranger just glares at Bartos and is just like very, seems very mad at Bartos about this. I don't think Bartos did anything wrong. Yeah. I don't know. Like not, not to get that kind of reaction. I thought. Right. Like it, it was like a very long stare that he had at him at the end of the scene. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe he's able to make Bartos think he did something wrong, which is why Bartos is like Adam's underling in the future. Yeah. Because he just is is making him uh, submissive to him. Even though oh, Bartos didn't be. do anything wrong. he's. I guess he's turning Bartos into a pawn, really. We've talked mm-hmm. about the Tiedemans all being pawns. Yeah. All right, then we get a <clears throat> couple more There's... things in this episode. Uh, so we've got alternate Jonas and Martha. They're going towards the flashlight. So we're getting our... Uh, our customary montage of all the characters and seeing where the characters are. He's lighting the flashlight into the caves. We see Helge sitting in jail, which we've seen other, we've seen Ulrich, we've seen Alexander, and now we're seeing Helge sitting in the jail cell. Um, very cool song in the background of this. It, even the, the caption said, ticking and metallic drums. And it, like, mm-hmm. it, that beat goes so well with the theme of the show. 
Yeah. And uh, alternate Jonas, or sorry, alternate Martha and Jonas are going through the caves. They get to the door. Instead of this door saying Sigmundes, this door says something that means let there be light. Mm -hmm. So Sigmundes, I don't remember. Do you remember the exact pronunciation, what the exact uh, translation of that was? Thus the world was created. So thus the world was created, let there be light. They kind of go, hand, they're pretty much probably back-to-back -back phrases in the Bible, I would assume. Yeah. And, you know, earlier old Martha's talking about how Jonas needs to um, decide to fight for the light. Right, the light versus the shadow. Yep. So um, I, li I like that that door was let there be light. I, thought, I was trying to think. And I would imagine whatever it says on that door is probably going to end up being a title of an episode, maybe the title of the finale. Yeah. Uh, Who knows? And we see Ulrich sitting in his office as Peter and Charlotte are leaving. And Hannah is getting home and sees Ulrich is not there. I don't feel like we got anything with Hannah's pregnant belly in this episode. We never saw that she was pregnant. Nope. And um, then we have, uh, we have old Martha staring at the coin as uh, alternate Martha and Jonas are going through the passage. Mm -hmm. Then we go way into the future to uh, September 23rd, 2053. We see the power plant and we see, um, we see the snow coming down and Martha is walking. She goes into that room where, uh, the room where it happened, the end of the second season, the room where everything exploded. She walks in and uh, some old man says, did you give it to him? I was always too gullible. And look who it is, it's Adam with like a black uh, jacket on. Yep. And there's all these machines going, and they have the God particle going as well in there. And um, so, you know, it's kind of a, it's like an interesting that we had old Martha working with young Jonas, old alternate Martha working with young Jonas, and we have old, a old Jonas, Adam, working with young alternate Martha. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I was always too gullible. So it seems like the, this always happened, that this, this Martha always went back and, and, interacted with the stranger, gave him the goo to create the ball as well. Yep. Um, and it looked to me like they were in some kind of room, like they were separated from the, from the ball, which is different than what we saw when Jonas was in there before. I don't know if it was just the way it was shot. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't, maybe they're like making adjustments as they, you know, their figures. To make it out. more safe or something. Yeah. It, it looked like they were in like a, like a separate office from where the main room is. Yeah, kind of like x-rays, like avoiding the radiation. Right, maybe. yeah, yeah, exactly, that type of thing. So, um, And Adam is looking more and more like, uh, I feel like he looks like Darth Vader with his helmet off at this point. Got the all black on. So, um, Do you think that Adam went straight there after he killed Martha, or do you think he went back to 21? Um, I think maybe he went back to 21 first. Because mm -hmm. this is six months, or... What is this? Three months later, three months after everything happened at the end of the second season. Yeah, I think he went back to home base mm -hmm. first, which would be twenty one. All right, but the episode is not done. So uh, usually we get that montage, and then we get one scene at the end. We actually are getting two scenes at the end. Uh, again, it seems like we're in the future, probably in twenty fifty three again or twenty fifty two. I guess if from twenty nineteen, it would be twenty fifty two this time. And. Uh, uh, Jonas and alternate Martha are walking out of the cave. This is a very different exterior to the cave than we've ever seen. And it's completely bright there. Literally mm -hmm. let there be light. It is very light there. It looks like a desert. It looks like Egypt or something. There are no trees or any people or buildings or anything around. Uh, it's like a desert wasteland. And uh, somebody approaches them is all wrapped up in, uh, in masks and scarves. And she takes, she takes off her mask and her scarf uh, I'm assuming that this is Stranger Martha, but I guess we don't have that confirmed. And she says to them the same line that the stranger said to Jonas when he first traveled to the future, welcome to the future. Mm -hmm. Also the same line that Celia said. Uh, uh, if we know yeah. that that woman's name is Celia, yeah. Yeah, Scarface. Yeah, Scarface. Yep, exactly. Um, and this, this uh, older Martha, Stranger Martha, does have a scar over her face, like a small scar, which you pointed out that uh, Eve has a scar kind of by her eye. Mm -hmm. um, so it seems like that's the same scar, but we don't have that on Martha yet, on younger Martha. Nope, not yet. And that is the end of the episode. So um, we have the alternate version of 2053. I think it's interesting that going through the tunnel, instead of taking you to the past, like it does in the prime world, it takes you to the future. Mm -hmm. 
So maybe that debunks the theory that all Rick or Charlotte is going to travel into the past and do something. Yeah. Um, or maybe maybe you go to the maybe it's the you go to the past if you go one way and the future if you go the other way. Yeah, that could be. So it's all just right. the opposite directions. Right, exactly. So in like in in the prime world, um both ways go to the past, and in mm-hmm. this world, one goes to the past, one goes to the future. Yep. I like that. All right, and that wraps up episode number three, Adam and Eva. So let's uh, let's do our MVPs for this episode. Okay. So you um, first. Hmm. I'm kind of. I'll go with Martha. Martha. Um, yeah. Alt Martha. I, I mean, oh, I guess it has to be Alt Martha. Yeah, it has to be Alt Martha. Um, I just think that she's you know really setting the final like cycle fully in motion here. I think from here on out, we're going to have a lot of ground being covered. I think mm-hmm. this is the final setup episode. I think the rest of the way we're going to see a lot of questions being answered and um, identities being revealed, motivations being changed, shifted. So I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, Martha's my pick here. Even though I gassed up Peter, he just, the, I, the Peter's coming. Next yeah. next episode, I predict like it's like the up and coming guy going into next season. You're circling. This is uh-huh. next season is the next episode is Peter's. If only episode. there was a next season. Next episode is Peter's episode. Yeah, um, yeah. I really don't know for this episode who to give it to. Um, I was thinking Adam, but by giving it to Adam, I'm also giving it to Jonas, and Jonas does some stupid stuff in this episode as well. So I don't feel like. I feel like Adam is dragging is dragged down by his younger versions of himself. Um, let's see. We have uh, Killian is the worst, so he's not going to get it. I I agree that Martha's putting some things in motion, but I'm not like loving anything that she's doing. Um, I'm going to give it to Peter, and this is under the assumption that Peter is the old man that we see in the beginning of the episode too, and so we're getting some interesting stuff with Peter. And I think it's the most intrigued that I've been by Peter, so. Uh, I'm giving him like a preemptive spot for an MVP. So I'll give Peter an MVP point. Okay. That's uh, fair. Let's see. It's Peter's second MVP overall in the first one this season. Nice. So, Good uh, currently, our lead, we have Katarina and alternate Martha, mother and daughter, both with two. We have uh, three ninjas with one and Peter with one. All right. Three ninjas, they might have to split those up uh, if, we, if it turns out that they're not the same person. Yeah, true. I'd say so far, middle, yeah, Cold is the MVP, though. He seems to do all the heavy work. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's the one who does all the talking. The old man's and done nothing. The... the kid's done a little bit. The but... kid, like, closed the door. Mm-hmm. And then the old man hasn't done shit. No. Just so. looks like Helge. Yeah, you just look a lot like Helge, bro. And I'm really not sure if these three are the same person anymore. Mm-hmm. I I, th- I think in fact, uh, if I had to bet, like on Vegas right now, I'd say no. You'd say no. You probably get pretty good odds on that. Yeah, I would probably get plus money. So I I just I I the the hand thing at the beginning is was supposed to make you think it, and like them being like together in the same outfits, but they're just like probably just Amish, mm-hmm. like you know, future Amish people. Or something. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's just to give them like a timeless costume. Yeah, it's just like, you know, the priest costume, mm-hmm. which allows them to travel through time. Because priests always have the same outfit, no matter where they're at through, like, the last 400, 500 years. Priests look like a priest. Mm-hmm. It's a perfect cover. Yeah, that's true. Um, all right, let's get into some of our feedback. So uh, we've got our friend Adrian, Adrian Colley, not Ariadne Colley. And he says, uh, when Jonas is questioning Martha... And uh, he's talking about how he doesn't remember uh, visiting Martha's world. He says he's a little irritated that Jonas didn't ask any follow-up questions. The two of them should have been comparing notes. He never did. Yeah. So it's just fate? He never did. He didn't have that information then. And he's, yeah. It's, yeah. Like, that would be But it's like, if he had free will, he should have been, like, asking a million questions. Yeah, well, But they had Martha for, for a couple days, and they didn't ask her any questions. Yeah, well. Bad use never, of time. Bad clock yeah. management between them. Bad clock management, indeed. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Adrian also talks about the letter. So he says that Noah is the one who handed it to Jonas in the first place. I do not remember Noah handing Jonas that letter. 
Yeah, you know, I have to. I don't really remember. Yeah. So, um, but he's asking, do you think older Martha wrote it, and or did young Martha just lie about writing it, or is it forgery? And mm-hmm. um, yeah, I just don't think we know. I my my guess on the letter is it's written by Adam. Um. Yeah, I don't really. I I'm not really sure. So that. Why do you think it would be Adam? Because the stranger needs some kind of push to turn himself into Adam. Oh, yeah, we all need a push, yeah. Right, okay. so I think that Adam could be putting something in that letter that's going to spur some line of thinking with, with the stranger. Maybe it's like this is what you need to do in order to get the ball working, and he tries to do that, and it's it, ca- it you know does something, but it causes him to turn into Adam physically. Yeah, provides some information he never would have gotten. Right, and then it's, you know, it's another letter that's bootstrapped, right, because mm-hmm. the only way he could have written it was by having read it. Yep. So, all right, and then um, – Walter Prager wrote in and said, I'm abandoning the idea of multiple worlds because everything in this show is pointing to a mirror universe. We've seen the bed on the opposite of the side of the room. The school building is flipped. And in this episode, oh, he pointed it out too. The cleft lift moves from the man's left side to his right side when they return to Eve's headquarters. Um, the true idea of mirror universes didn't exclude the possibility of now uh, of more than two, but strongly hints at just two. Okay. You think it's a mirror universe? I think I'm still, I'm more on board of like, this is like a, this is after everything or before everything. It's not, it's not mirror. It's, it's later on, either further in the future or further in the past. I mean, originally I thought mirror, that was my theory going into this season. Um, and I think based on what we've seen though, it's not that everything is just mirrored in this world. Things are different. Things are like, things have been affected from what's previously come. So I'm more coming towards your end of, the theory that mm-hmm. this takes place afterwards because if it was just mirrored it's like well his left eye would be gone it's Helge's right ear it, it's not everything is not just mirrored things are mirrored often but it's everything is just off or different yeah it's and everything affected, is often different because and and affected it, it could, from what's come before I think. right like if the world was reset with things just a little bit different it could be that yeah. kind of thing um and, and I, the reason why I like it being the future or the past, not like it matters, just some other time that's much further down the line, is because this show we've always been watching has been about time travel. And then for it now, all of a sudden, to be alternate worlds as well, it, if, it's, if it's all like one, one timeline, it, it just makes it a little bit more uh, cohesive with the theme of the show. I agree. Yeah. Uh, so he, uh, he has a theory as well. So Adam slash Jonas killed Martha in the prime world. So would it be fitting for Eve slash Martha to then kill Jonas? Mm-hmm. So it would create a paradox. Younger mm-hmm. Jonas dies. Uh, so what happens to older Jonas? But maybe such a paradox is not possible in the same universe, uh, but somehow permitted if it does by someone who is there from the mirror world. Mm-hmm. So, um, and if that happens, then future Jonas would end up losing his past uh, up to the time younger Jonas is killed. So I don't know when when she would ki- if if Adam kills Martha in the prime world and then Eve kills Jonas in the in the mirror world, if we're calling it that, the alternate world. Um, I guess it would have to be that maybe it's not that she kills Jonas, but she kills like an ancestor that leads to Jonas because Jonas was never alive in this world. Oh yeah, yeah. So know. Eve kills like. Um, Kills Mickle, I guess, right? Because kills his father, or doesn't? Maybe doesn't kill. Well, I guess if she just killed Mickle, that would be some. That would be some nice symmetry too. If she killed Mickle, so it's uh, another member of that family that gets killed, and by yeah. Mickle being killed, he Jonas can never be born. And she kills. She's killing her brother in the time, right. in that case too. Um, or you know, maybe it's not even killing, but Eve is preventing. You know, somehow Eve prevented Mickle from traveling back which leads to jonas not being there so maybe it's not even as as specific as you know adam killed martha so eve kills jonas but adam was responsible for martha being dead and eve is responsible for jonas not being alive yeah so it's like the slight shift from one world to the other exactly eve is actually responsible for this Mm -hmm. so i like that all right and then um let's see so we also have uh, Christina Johnson also pointed out the left side of the lip that the scar has moved. So lots sure. of people, lots of people picked up on this. Yeah. So um, nice to nice to see that I wasn't the only one who noticed that. 
All right, and that is it for feedback. So if you want to write in feedback, if you're watching, be sure that you send it to digestingdarkpod at gmail.com. You got to make sure you have the pod in there at the end. And just include your uh, the episode number that you're up to. So the next episode that we're going to be talking about is episode number four. The title of that episode. Did you catch the title of the next episode? Uh, I didn't. No. It is The Origin. Okay. So what do you think that we're getting in The Origin? Um... Well, the origin, I don't know, the origin of Stranger Martha. I'm not sure. Yeah, the or, it could just be the origin of that world, yeah. how that world is created. Um, I think that we're probably going to go to, I would imagine the origin is going to be a lot of things that we're getting the origin of. A lot of times the title doesn't just refer to one thing. Um, but my, my big bold claim is that we are going to get the origin of how uh, the stranger turns into Adam. So I think the stranger is going to attempt some experiment to get that goo working, and it is going to scar him and make him look like Adam. I like that. Yeah, he's going to burn off all of his hair and make himself all scarred up and ugly. Okay. Maybe like look at it. the origin of the the three ninjas guys too. Okay. Yep. So I like it. All right. So that episode is either going to come out Tuesday, June thirtieth, or possibly Wednesday, uh, July first just depends on our schedules we're trying to line that up so uh you know we'll get this one out and then if you want to watch episode four and send in your feedback if we do record it tomorrow on june 30th it won't be till later in the day um so you definitely have some time and you can send your emails to digestingdarkpod at gmail.com make sure you put the episode number in the subject line so we know to look at it yep all right anything else you want to say before we close this one down uh, no, nope. I think that uh, we pretty much covered it. I feel a lot more clear after this than I did before. Oh, good, good. Yeah, I'm excited to see where it's going. Um, I think, you know, there is, a, there is a, a greater plan in place. It's, it's definitely, we're seeing things for a reason. So yep. we'll have to see what, where this world leads to as we go on to the next episode, The Origin. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Brooks ZA. And I'm at Aaron J-A-Y Brooks. And we'll see you next time for episode number four, season three, The Origin. See ya.